So what's up people and welcome to a midweek discussion on Monster Number 8. So we're between episodes right now and uh, since the next one hasn't come out yet I thought I would make a video about a question that I've always had with regards to the series since it started. And that's with regards to these monsters or kaiju. And the question is, is what exactly are these kaiju? So it doesn't go into that much detail so far from the comic, but from what we can figure out, all of a sudden uh, there were these appearances of large beasts, right? Kaiju, monsters, whatever you want to call them. And they started terrorizing at least Japan, if not the world. And it was enough for the government to create an anti-monster defense uh, troop called the JDF. And the story starts off basically as if it's one of those days when the uh, monsters come out and the JDF go out to battle them. And it starts focusing in on the life of Kafka uh, as a, a cleanup member. And the story kind of naturally goes forward with, uh, from there without too much explanation of where these monsters came from and what exactly are they? And so that's always been a question that came up. How did the world, or at least Japan, end up in this sort of situation? Does Japan even know um, why these kaijus come out? And so if we start comparing this story with a lot of the other monster or kaiju type of stories out there, there are multiple ways that these kaijus appear on this planet, right? One of them is that they are transported from a separate rift, right, as you saw in Pacific Rim. Another one is they're born out of the Earth, possibly to defend the planet, as you see in Godzilla and the other types of stories that are related to it. Uh, the other is, is that it's historically, you know, uh, comes through the ages and evolution, such as what you see in King Kong. And of course, finally, the ones that you uh, see with things like Ultraman or Urutoraman are uh, the monsters that come from outer space. And so are they any one of these types of monsters? And we're not exactly sure. And right now, we have no clue as to determine if any of these are true until most recently with the uh, recent chapters that have come out. And so that's why I wanted to talk about this. Now, we've recently found out, especially with the most recent chapter, 15 if I remember right, is that at least some of the kaiju seem to be created by other entities, which I will call kaijin, or uh, monstrous humanoids. And I don't know if there's a multiple number of them, but there's at least one because he came out in 15 as well as in a previous chapter. And um, he always comes out to kind of watch his monsters perform against the JDF. And so far, whenever they don't perform well, he goes into, I don't know what he will do. I mean, he seems to be attacking the JDF. I'm not sure if it's to defend his own monsters or if it's for another reason. And of course, most recently, the monstrous humanoid seems to indicate that he wants to get specimens. He or she or it wants to get specimens of the JDF to do research. I don't know what sort of research. And I don't really particularly want to know what sort of research on them to I'm not sure exactly what study them for what I'm not exactly sure. But it does indicate that potentially all of these monsters are humanoid made, uh, kaijin or human monsters. And I'll go into that why I think that maybe they're not just created by other monsters, but they're created by human beings. But then the question is, is exactly why that happened. And it seems to be that especially in Japan, all of a sudden, these monsters came out, which seems to indicate that the incubation time between the creations of these monsters seems to be relatively quick. And they wreak havoc and 
It's been going on for a while, at least long enough that the government has already established a foundation. The people of the country know exactly what to do if a monster comes out, how to flee. The uh, first responders know exactly what to do to clear any hazardous areas of the citizens. And of course, the JDF know what to do to go in. The weapons of the JDF has already been established and they have already been shown to be quite effective against a lot of the monsters. And recruiting systems have been made. All of that has been set up, which indicates that this has been going on for quite a while. So the question is, is uh, aside from who is making it, what are these monsters? Of course, why is uh, why are these monsters being made, which of course we don't know yet. But the other uh, interesting thing is, of course, Kafka himself, right? Kafka became a monster. And Kafka became a monster because of the fact that he was, uh, I guess, contaminated, if you want to say it, or a uh, symbiotic relationship with a monster that went into its body. And it created monster number eight. And of course, that creates this entire plot of the story. But of course, then we encounter the other humanoid monster, the one that came out in chapter 15. And we start understanding maybe where the source of this monster is. Maybe this monster is just another humanoid type monster, which is higher in intelligence than all these other monsters. And because of that, it can actually lead uh, these other monsters, possibly spawn other monsters. But the other possibility is that it's very similar to Kafka in that some other human being was infected by a different monster. And because of that, it created this other antagonistic kaijin or uh, monstrous humanoid. And since this monster humanoid can metamorph or uh, how do you want to say it transition from a humanoid form to a monster form just like Kafka then there is a good possibility that the uh, source or how this monster was created was just the same as Kafka so then the question is is what is this process who is doing this right why are these monsters invading human beings and how come this one is antagonistic and it comes to a situation that may be very similar to some of these other comics that you've seen, such as Inuyashiki or uh, Jagan, right? Both of those are air alien entities that have infiltrated human beings. And similar to those types of mangas, the resulting humanoid monster, or these kaijins, including Monster 8, have the persona of the original human being. So if you remember in Inuyashiki, there was of course Mr. Inuyashiki, right? Who was a uh, old gentleman and uh, he got that cybernetic entity, but he retained his own personality. And of course, the other entity who was somewhat a much more demented, dark sort of figure also got that same power. And so you're not exactly sure in this case if the contamination was sentient, but at least the resulting uh, creature or humanoid, uh, including Inuyashiki, was human, and they retained the sentience of the original being, but became much more powerful. And because of that, if you have a light per uh, side person like uh, Inuyashiki and a dark side person, like the other entity, I'm sorry, I can't remember what the other character's name was, then you could, you could understand that clash. And maybe that's what's going on here. Jigan is a, another sort of situation where all of these beings get contaminated by those weird alien frogs. And uh, yeah, Jigan himself, you know, gets uh, superpowers and everybody else does too and then it becomes uh, somewhat uh, chaos because of the fact that these people suddenly come out into the being and they're not really controlled by anything and so they have to go by their own persona and when they find out that they have powers of course many of them start exploiting them to gain personal benefit right and that's 
the story of Jagan. Monster 8 seems like it's going down that situation. And this also seems like in this situation, at least if Kafka is a good representation of a monster humanoid, then the monster that's created, such as Monster 8, still retains that person's feelings or soul, right? So the other monster may be an infection of a human that has some very demented um, uh, mindset, right? And not only is it a demented mindset, but an extremely brilliant mindset because it can create monsters. Kafka can't. Kafka has really high powers, and so does this monster, it seems like, because it seems to be able to defeat uh, JDF soldiers relatively easily. But uh, the question is, is how is this um, other humanoid being able to spawn monsters? Is it a part of the biological capability? Is it a power of that humanoid? Or is it something that the humanoid created? And if it's something that the humanoid created, the human side created, then did he also create these little tiny monsters that infect others? In, in fact, was he the first test subject to test his infection, right? Or were these actually uh, spawned from a different situation? And what's interesting is that although the persona is very much uh, like the host, right, uh, like Kafka, for example, it was interesting because of the fact that the monster that uh, infected him actually said, I found you before it infected him, which seemed to indicate that it was looking for Kafka, a person of Kafka's what physiology personality morality i'm not exactly sure but it decided to go into kafka and that's what created monster number eight right a monstrous being that is on the side of the humans very much like uh tokyo ghoul or some uh, some of these others right uh, even devil man falls into that sort of category but exactly again do these small monsters look for a compatible being from a physiological perspective or a compatible being from an ideological perspective? Did the little monster go into Kafka because this person seemed like it could save and defeat other monsters to save the human race? Or was it for some other reason that it said, I found you? And if it was for the ideological situation, then is the monster that infected the other being, the antagonistic being, also something of uh, uh, equal uh, ideology, something that wants to destroy the human race? And if so, what are these monsters again? If these little monsters are sentient, which they seem they are, why are they in a sort of situation where some of them wants to destroy the earth? and the other ones want to save it. Is there a faction that has come from outer space to do this so? Or is uh, the monster that came out and infected Kafka a renegade monster that was created by the human, right? It will be interesting to see how this goes on, but it is interesting now that there are these humanoid monsters that are co coming out, and for all we know, the antagonist that's creating these other spawning huge monsters may not be the only humanoid monster out there. And for all we know, there will be a whole series of humanoid monsters that will eventually come out that Kafka will have to go after. So even if Kafka goes and defeats this monster, this may not end the story, of course, and if it was relatively quick to defeat this monster, then you know it won't end. And that usually means that there is another set of monstrous humanoids or a group, you know, that's lurking in the shadows and spawning these other monsters. But anyway, 
I thought that these uh, monsters were very interesting and it is definitely the uh, whole central uh, part of the story so I just wanted to bring this up as a question not as a uh, essay so that I can hear your thoughts and your comments with regards to what you uh, feel these monsters are. I think this is going to become one of the central points of this entire story and I would like to hear your opinion on uh, how the story may move forward with regards to these monsters. But anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. I just wanted to make this just to ask these questions and to bring up some points. And uh, I'll continue on with more of the chapter by chapter uh, Monster 8 uh, videos as they come out. And I hope you join me at those times. But uh, until the next episode, Happy manga reading, and as always, Jai Nice Day, everyone.